Hello everybody, this is Mr. Biscaywitz, aka Mr. B from Hayfield Secondary School, and this video is about building a survival shelter uh, in the uh, Project Shelter in White Box Learning. Um, this video does assume that you have already completed the research section. Uh, so you understand what the survival challenge is most importantly is that there's been a uh, Disaster and you were stranded way up in a snowy mountain and you have to survive based on the resources you find around you until uh, uh, Rescue crews can come and get you um, And you're going to be building a shelter. These are the four different designs you have um, and then there's a map of the resources around you. Uh, we'll talk a lot more about that in a little bit. And of course, another one of the other resources is yourself um, and the amount of uh, work that your body is capable of doing, okay? And we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, so um, let's get straight away into it. All right, so uh, I actually did take some survival training with the Green Berets and uh, Army Rangers, and they told me the number one most important tool in a survival situation is your brain. And so we certainly are gonna exercise our brains today in analyzing the situations and making smart decisions. And number two is where you are, or a map, okay? And we have one of those as well. Because where you are in, and what's around you is greatly going to influence your decisions. Um, so let's go ahead and look at that map for one second. So here is a map of the area. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. All right. And let's look at the icons on this map. Um, the icons that look like a little house um, are campsites. So these are areas that you've been told um, over the radio. The person that's trying to help you said, hey, here are some decent places to camp. Um, and also they've identified for you where there are some resources near those campsites. So next to uh, the other symbol on here is um, these trees. And they're telling you, hey, there's some good natural building materials in these areas. And then they're telling you, hey, there's some also areas here where you might find some man-made materials like abandoned tool sheds or old abandoned cabins or, or things like that. Um, and so uh, they've identified those for you on this map as well. This is hugely, huge going to influence our decision making because... of this. Now this is an elevation map. Uh, you could also kind of call it a topographic map. It's showing you the elevation in the surrounding areas. So uh, pink is the lowest elevation, red is the highest, and so wherever you go from one color to another you have just changed elevations. Notice how to read this map. Uh, you're kind of in a valley. The purple blue part is the bottom of the valley. Okay, it's relatively kind of sort of flat down there. Not too flat though, because going from one color to another means a thousand foot, a thousand foot <laughs> change in elevation. Okay, so, um, but keep that in mind. As we go out here and we see what is, you know, red, what is the elevation of red? Well, red is the highest most elevation, 6,000 feet. So looking at this map right here, you're in a low spot surrounded by very tall mountains. You are not walking out of here, okay? There is no way you're gonna walk over a 6,000 foot mountain in the snow and live to tell about it, okay? So you gotta make do with what's around you. So um, let's kind of talk about where would be a good place to, um, have a, our building site. Well, let's look at number one. Well, number one is okay. There is a relatively flat area. Anywhere you have an area that is all the same color, that means it's gonna be relatively flat in that area. Um, so that big green area next to number one is relatively flat. You do have trees uh, near you, which is a good thing. 
Um, you do have some materials near you, which is kind of on that same elevation. Um, but your other sources of materials are um, at much different elevations, which means, especially this one up here, number one is, is way up there. Um, so you would almost have to say, well, we'll never get to that one. Um, so, okay, that's number one. Uh, number two is over here. Um, it's got trees, it's got um, a materials uh, area and another materials area, all kind of on the same level, uh, not too terrible in here as far as having to go up and down hills. There are some other resources available at other elevations a little bit further away. And area three, um, is uh, right here. Trees kind of close by. They're a thousand feet up. And then all of the materials area kind of far away. Um, and except maybe for nine here, you can get from building site three to material site nine. Not too bad. You'd have to walk down a hill, cross a valley, and then up a hill. Not too bad. Okay. So which site do you do you think is the best? Remember, you want to get access to your resources expending the least amount of energy. You got to save your energy. Well, for me, I'm going with site number two. Okay? It has the most resources to me, it looks like, for the least amount of energy expended to get it. Okay? Um, so that's going to be the first thing we're going to do. So let's go into our assignments, okay? So we're going to choose a building site. I just decided to choose building site number two, okay? And um, there's a tree site near us. It is tree site number three. It defaults to number one over here. We don't want to go to tree site number one. It is way over here. We're going to go to the one right next to us, tree site number three. All right, and we'll just stop there for a minute and let's look at some other information, okay? So those are our resources. We're going with building site number two, all right? Now, we know we have to build a shelter. We got some wood. Um, and what else are we gonna have access to? Let's look at these uh, materials, all right? So if you look at, uh, I just clicked on materials, um, it's sitting here going, okay, here are what materials are available at which site. And you got plywood and foam and newspaper and carpet, um, things like that. And I hope you're able to look at the list based on what you learned in the research section and look at ones that can help keep you dry and ones that can help keep you warm because those are going to be your two goals to stay dry and warm while you wait for rescuers to come and um and carry all out of there all right um and this is what are at the different locations so notice these sites near building site um two um is nine and six so nine has some plastic sheeting polyethylene is plastic um and carpet padding that's good okay that's a in good insulating material and then we have a waterproofing material and at site six, which is over here, we have cardboard. That's a good insulating material, especially for the ground. Um, sandbags, okay, let's think about this. Is a sandbag really gonna be very helpful? Have you ever picked up a sandbag? They're really heavy. So no, sandbags are absolutely useless. I, I mean, if you wanna use them, go ahead but I really can't think of uh, a productive way. I would use them um, unless I was like trying to protect against a flood or something. Um, and maybe that's why they're there. Maybe in this valley it floods sometimes. Uh, then there's newspaper at six. So we have newspaper, we have uh, cardboard and we have uh, plastic sheeting and we got carpet padding. So we got some pretty good materials here. Let's go take a look at our, what are we going to build? All right. I'm going to click on all this stuff. Okay. Um, now let me, 
I'm going to close some of this stuff just for a few minutes. Okay, so uh, Whitebox gives you a default shelter. That is what you are building is a shelter. And you're going to use the resources that are at your disposal that we can find on this map. And you need to build a shelter that's going to keep you warm and dry until rescuers come. All right. So um, shape of the um, shape of the shelter is just a rectangular shelter. There are other shapes available to you. They talked about those in the research section a bit. Um, I'm going to stick with the default one. Not that it's the bed shelter, but I just don't want to give too much away. I'm going to make this default um, shelter work. All right. Now, um, there is no source of heat except your body heat. So your body is trying to heat up this space defined by this shelter. The shelter is kind of big. Okay. There's a lot of open air in here. So you need to make it as small as possible. It's harder to heat up a large area than it is a small area. So I'm going to lower the height on this area. And I am going to, let's see, I think this is, there we go. And then the width about 10. Okay, so I have minimized the size of this shelter to just barely fit the four hikers. Is it going to be um, luxurious? No. Uh, is it going to keep you alive? That's the goal. Okay. So my shelter surface area right now is 124 square feet. In other words, to wrap this thing in material, and to keep it dry and warm is going to take 124 square feet. Okay. So um, let's look at our materials. So we've minimized our shelter. Remember, you we do that in a lot of our projects is we minimize our materials. We minimize one thing so we can maximize something else. We minimize the size of the shelter so we can maximize the heat that stays inside the shelter. That's really the goal. If I had to say there's one goal, it's maximizing the heat that's in this shelter. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and look at these materials again. And over at site nine, we have some plastic sheeting. A hundred or 220 square feet, and we have carpet padding 120. Our surface area of our shelter is 124. But there's only 120 of padding. You might go, oh, that's pretty close, Mr. B. No, that's no good. I'll tell you why. Because that still means if I took all that carpet padding and covered your shelter in it, you still would have a four square foot hole in the side of the shelter. Is that shelter going to stay warm up in the mountains when it's 10 degrees? No. Okay. Um, so we need... 124 square feet or we need to make our shelter smaller well i think we can make our shelter a little bit smaller see there's still some room on the elbows here or shoulders so what if i make that like a little bit smaller like 9.5 feet instead of 10. okay and now we're at 119 square feet surface area our shelter and now that carpet padding will completely cover our shelter and our plastic. Yay, so now we got to go get it, okay? So how do we do that? Well, we do that by sending one of the hikers. I'm just moving this temporarily. I'm going to keep this down here, keep our shelter view up there. Um, we got to send our hikers out to, so we have to assign our hikers tasks. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get some branches to build a frame. Can I make this smaller? Yes. No, 
it just moves. That's okay. Um, we need to build a frame and then we're going to cover it in plastic and carpet foam, hopefully. So we are going to utilize tree site. We're at building site number two. So we're going to use tree site number three. We wouldn't use tree site number one because or two, they're way over here. So tree site number three, and I'm going to send hiker one to go get it. Notice the four hikers, they all have different energy levels, which is normal. Um, so the two lowest ones are hiker one and four, and then you see two and three. Maybe the younger, stronger, or maybe they just had a big lunch. Who knows? All right. Um, so I'm going to go with hiker one. There I got my wood, and he, the, hiker one had just enough energy, okay, to, um, to get the uh, wood, but now they're done. So for other tasks, I'm going to have to assign another hiker. Now we already said we want to go out to um, site nine here and pick up that polystyrene, the plastic sheeting and the carpet pad. So let's go, and that's material site nine. So we go to material site nine and I'm going to use hiker four. I'm saving hiker two and three for maybe we might have some big jobs that we need people that have higher energy levels. So let me go over here and I'm going to assign hiker four to pick up both the carpet padding and the plastic. I want you to notice something. Notice down here the R value of my shape. These are the dimensions and this is the R value. The actual R value as it sits right now with just a wooden frame is zero. In other words, it's not protecting you at all. You need to get it up hopefully to 4.81 minimum of 3.5, but it's at zero right now. What's going to happen first? Let's do this. Let's not worry about the polystyrene. Or no, let's just get the polystyrene. Okay, our shelter is covered. It leaves that open area there just so you can still see inside. But assume it's completely covered by plastic. Um, but my R value didn't go up. And you're like, why not, Mr. B? We covered the whole thing in plastic. Because plastic has no insulating properties at all. Uh, maybe if you put on 10 layers of it, it might, but not just one or two layers. So we still need the carpet pad. But so we're going to let Hiker 4 also pick that up. And look what happens to our R value down here when Hiker 4 picks up the carpet pad, our R value goes up to 1.76. We are insulated a little bit. And Hiker 4 has done everything he can do. They're done. And how do we look in our specs now? Hey, we got it up to 30 degrees. All right. We need to get it up to 50 degrees. Uh, Headroom in here is something that uh, you'll have to mess around with and, and change the shape um, when sitting up. I'm not sitting up in mine. Anyway, you'll figure that out. Um, and so um, I'm going to leave it there because everybody was asking. They I got all these emails. It stays at 10. It stays at 10. I can't get it past 10. Well, now you know how to do that. How can I increase my R value even more? Now we've got all of the resources from site nine, but there's another material site, site six, and it has cardboard, uh, sandbags, and newspaper. I wonder if we could send one of our hikers to go get some of that material. And then there also is another material site 
over here, material site eight that has glass, newspaper, foam insulation. That sounds pretty sweet, doesn't it? All right. So do we have another hiker that can go over there and get that stuff? Okay. Um, and uh, improve the R value of our shelter. So now you know how to raise the R value of a shelter um, by gathering up some materials and see all the, the data that we had to process. We had to go, oh, wait a minute. What does the terrain look like? Okay. We want, imagine if when we sent Hiker 4 out to get that plastic that they had to hike up here look at what's it what's it area one area i mean uh materials area one has newspaper and plywood to go from buildings this building site one up to materials one they'd have to climb two thousand feet up and back do you think they'd have enough energy to do that okay so we had to take all that into account how much energy are we going, where are our resources and how much energy is it going to take us to go get them? Okay. Um, so over here, you had kind of a pretty good hike in between your resources. Over here, these resources are a little bit closer, um, but you had more terrain. But this still might not be bad. I don't know. It's something that you can play around with. I can go in here and pick a different build site and build it out. But now you know how to do that, okay? So good luck. Make sure you keep checking your spec that you get it up to the desired temperature. And the only way you're going to do that is by increasing the R value of your shelter, okay? All right, so you have a lot of fun with this. It's really kind of interesting, and good luck.